Hey everyone, welcome to Vezer. And today we've got another video documenting our progress on our first batch of 10 robots. As you can see, I have them all running the same G code file here. And as requested, we are starting this video showing them all moving. In this video, I'll be showing off some of the more core features of the arms and some of the software that I'm using to make these run. Most notably, a piece of software that I am referring to as the hypervisor. This is a piece of software that allows me to talk to any of the arms, all of the arms at once. It's basically a broker that allows communication without having to go to every individual node. Before I start this next part, I want to say that I'm looking for a project that's worthy of throwing 10 robots at. If you have any ideas, please leave them in the comments. Something fun, something helpful, something to help with the current COVID crisis, something educational. Any idea would be appreciated, so thank you. So as you can see here, in one screen we have the hypervisor, and in another screen here we have what is shown on one of the robot screens. So as you can see here, we can go through, we can select robots. I like for my machines, I like to be able to see what state they're in at a glance from a distance. So if they're active and they're connected to the hypervisor, then the blue light is on. If they are disconnected, then it just goes to the regular green color. We can select them all, we can select none. So let's go through and move these. <clears throat> so let's go and I'm going to go and move them all into some random position. So from the hypervisor here, we are able to send commands to any robot any number of robots. So let's just pick the first one here and we are going to tell it to go home. You can see over here that I have named all of the robots. Let's send the next three home. I've found that it's easier to give them all names. It's easier when you're trying to pass a message from one to the other or to remember which ones are having issues or whatever it is, it's easier for them to have names and uh, it's also easier when you are trying to send them a message. So how about we just select them all? We'll send all of them home. I'm going to walk over and just make sure. Okay, it looks like they all went home. So now we've homed them all in the X, Y direction. We've homed theta and phi. So you're able to type something in here into the MDI, just like you would if you're typing in something to any individual robot. So how about we just pass it a regular command here. So we will just go um, so this guy, you can see that it moves, you can send it back. We can take this command and we can send it to a few. Or we can take any command and send it to all of them. So how about I just send them all back home? And 
and then I'm going to hone them all in the Z direction. And what you're going to see here is that Alice and Gabby are, they have a, they're running a newer version of the firmware, so they, the Z is at a different position when they're home than the other ones. So how about we send them all to a position that we know, so that when we start the next part, they are all starting from the same position. And I don't know if you can hear this very well, but some of them, when they're moving down in the Z direction, make kind of a terrible noise. I have bought some ball screws, so I'm going to be putting these on soon. That's something that I wanted to do originally and didn't do. <clears throat> it's something that I should have done when I first started. So now we have them all, and I am still debating on how I want to format uh, the passing of functions uh, for the moment. I just have a syntax like this. So we just pass it the load G code function. For right now, I'm using the vertical bar um, as a delimiter here. Really, I haven't decided what I want to do yet, uh, but I do know that I can pass all kinds of junk through here, and I know that I'm not going to get caught up by having some character that I'm not expecting, and I can pass pretty much anything through here that I want. So we go load G-code as our function. We need to give it a path. So we are going to uh, give the path to where the file is located. And the file name. Okay. We have all of the machines selected. So we are going to send this. You can see over here in the machine screen that it has just loaded loaded 38 lines. There are 38 lines of G-code in the file. And so now we are going to tell them all to run this G-code. Also, the way that I've written this, um, you can send a message from one robot to another. The syntax would look something like this. If I want to send a message to Betty, say, we send it like this, comma. Um, you can send it either some uh, new command. Or we can send it a function. And um, one of the things that I like about the way that this is, is you can ask it to load a G-code file every time that it gets to this point in the program. So it allows you to iterate while the machine is running. So you can go and you can edit this G-code file, and then when it comes around the loop and it comes to do it again, then you can have a new version of the file, and you can iterate quickly while without having to stop anything. I know it's a little dangerous, but that's how I like to run. I believe the file is done here. Let's turn off all of the motors. We will deactivate all of them. And you can see here that we're back where we started. I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. So thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time.